and more and more what i'm finding is that especially amongst the uh, youth the younger generation there is a sense of being left alone and they start to feel lonely so i think it is very important that we reconnect i think this is the most important message i wanted to share today in this concept of role of yoga in uh, the present times is that we need to reconnect with one another and this connectivity that we have to build with each other is a connectivity that has to be from the heart and it has to be a connectivity that presently cannot be in a physical way we cannot meet in the same place physically today due to the health scenario but we can meet online and today currently there are 64 of us all in the same place at the same time so if we can all come together at the same place at the same time with the same purpose i think this is something very very beautiful and this is actually what yoga is all about yoga as you have learned theoretically is the union be between the jivatma and the paramatma yujyate anena iti yoga is a standard answer everybody gives they say it unifies the jivatma with the paramatma yoga is the union between the body mind and the spirit all of these are theoretically we churn them out in our answer sheets but what is it that yoga is actually connecting is actually each and every one of us in this wide wide universe because every one of us and i'm not just meaning the human beings i'm talking about all living beings every living being has energy at its core this energy that is there in each and every living being of this whole universe that energy is what we have understood as the prana shakti the mukya prana or the maha prana or the purna prana that is the energy which is there in the whole universe it is the same energy that is there in you that is there in me that is there in the cats and the dogs and the chickens and the buffaloes and well it is the same energy even in coronavirus of course with a virus is it living or dead that itself living or non living is a very big question that people ask and because the virus sort of is caught between stuff there that same energy is lying in all of us yet we feel different than each other we feel that you are different than me they are different than us we are different than them and what has happened is the moment you start to focus on the differences the moment you start to have the sense of dvaitam or duality or dichotomy the dvandvas the two twos they start to take over your whole consciousness so what is happening is the moment the dvandva comes the duality comes the dvaitam comes the brihadaranyaka upanishad one of our very great upanishads in indian culture it tells us from dvaitam comes bhayam bhayam is fear and bhayam comes from dvaitam which means duality or dichotomy the very sense that you are different than me sets off in me the fear psychosis fear comes from a sense of duality you are different than me so you become a threat to me it is the perception of a threat that sets off the entire stress response those of you who have heard me before you will know that i do not like the term stress response because for me it is a stress reaction for me the word response implies a consciousness the use of the prefrontal cortex that area that has the buddhi 
that to me is a response anything below this for me is reactivity and what is happening is it is a reflex reflexive reaction that is happening like the spinal cord reflexes you know you do the knee jerk and you tap the patellar tendon and you have the knee jerk to test the spinal reflexes you can do the ankle jerk and you can put the coronal reflex you can do all of these reflexes all of the reflexes are reactionary in nature in the sense they are just reacting to the stimulus there is an action reaction coupling stimulus and reaction the moment we say response it implies consciousness so normally we use the term theoretically we use the term technically we use the term stress response the whole stress response or in my terms stress reaction it all starts from the perception of stress it is only when i perceive something as being stressful that my stress response gets triggered so the key element in the whole stress response is perception of stress this is where yoga plays the role the biggest role in modifying stress because what does yoga do it enables us to change consciously our perception of the stressor the stressor is going to be there covid 19 is going to be there the coronavirus is going to be there whether you like it or not whether you believe in it or not it is there people are dying people are suffering yes but then i can choose how i perceive that stress if i am going to start the perception that oh my god i am going to die my family is going to die the world is going to end what will happen to all my property what will happen to my credit card what will happen to my bank account what will happen to my completion of my degree and my post graduation and my job opportunities and all my plans to make money and become famous and if i start to get stressed about this the fear psychosis is going to take over and with that fear is going to come the whole stress response both the acute and the chronic acute stress it is basically your hypothalamus and the autonomic nervous system affecting your adrenal medulla adrenaline no adrenaline epinephrine no epinephrine and its secretions with all the acute stress and the hypothalamus pituitary adrenal axis which is the adrenal cortex which is all your cortisol and the chronic stress so what is happening both the acute stress and the chronic stress both are mediated through the hypothalamus that is why to me the hypothalamus is the seat of what in yoga we call samatvam yoga is said to be samatvam siddhya asiddhayo samabhutva samatvam yoga uchyate the bhagavad gita tells us that samatvam to me the neurophysiological correlate is the hypothalamus because it is the hypothalamus that sort of is the key central unit that determines your acute and chronic stress either through the autonomic nervous system pathway sympathetic and vagal or the neuroendocrine rather psycho neuroendocrine or psycho neuroimmune pathway the moment you are stressed the moment fear and the survival instinct which in yoga is called abhinivesha it is one of the kleshas avidya asmita raga dvesha abhinivesha ha klesha ha says maharishi patanjali that abhinivesha klesha which is the survival instinct i have to survive at any cost that's your brain stem what is your brain stem doing three important things that keep you alive your heart is beating so blood is circulating your lungs are working so you are breathing and you can digest your food respiration circulation digestion these three are taken care of by your brain stem so it is only caring that whether you stay alive even if you are in a vegetative state being on a ventilator for the next 35 years of your life all it cares about the brain stem cares about is keep this person alive but the question comes you are alive but do you have a life 
That is where the hypothalamus comes in, giving you a qualitative aspect of the life. And that is why we want to change the control center from the brain stem, which is the old reptilian complex, which is based on reflexes and reactions. We want to bring the full brain, the prefrontal cortex. This is the part that makes you a buddhiman. This is the part related to the buddhi, which has the Icha Shakti, Kriya Shakti, Jnana Shakti. It is the part where the Viveka and the Vairagya can come in. The Viveka, which is discernment to make the right choice. And Vairagya, to have an objectivity towards your own experiences, a metacognitive ability, is Vairagya. Viveka Vairagya are based on this prefrontal cortex. And that is why the key to managing the whole stress response lies in pranayama. Because instead of the brainstem respiratory center telling you how to breathe, the prefrontal cortex is starting to say, I am going to take charge and breathe in this way. That is where the change is happening. The change is happening in the concept of you taking charge of your own breathing. That is why the breathing, the respiratory uh, process is so important to transform consciousness. This is why Maharishi Patanjali tells us, Dharana Sucha Yogyata Manasaha. Your mind becomes fit for concentration and the internal process. Dharana, Dhyana, Samadhi, which, which are the Samyama. The Antaranga Yoga of the Samyama, Dharana, Dhyana, Samadhi. You become fit. You develop Adhikara. You develop Yogyata. A yogi is one who has Yogyata. If you don't have yogyata, you are not a yogi, you are ayogi. In Tamil, we say ayokian. Ayokian means an unfit one who wants something by hook or crook. Without studying, I want to pass the exam. You are an ayokian, not a yogian. Yogian is a yogi, one who is fit for that experience. And that is why it is so important for us to realize. We need to realize that we need to be fit for it. And that is why the pranayama sadhana is so important because it shifts the focus. The control center is shifted from the brain stem, which is your reptilian complex, to the prefrontal cortex, which is your human complex. So you are shifting from the old paleocortex, which is your spinal cord brain stem, and the mammalian, which is your limbic system. You are shifting straight into your human part the human prefrontal neocortex, which is the seat of consciousness. The Chitta Akasha is connected through this region. So in between the reptilian and the human, we have the mammalian. What is this mammalian? It is our limbic system. The amygdala, the hippocampus, the cingulate gyrus. And these are the total areas that amplify two other kleshas called raga and dvesha. So Abhinivesha was your brainstem. I have to keep alive at any time, any way. Huh? Doesn't matter what happens to anybody. I need to live. I need to survive at any cost. And that is the brainstem. Now, what are these two things doing? The limbic system is the likes and dislikes. I like it, I don't like it, I like it, I don't like it, I like it, don't, I don't like it. And you keep on getting pulled apart by the Raga and Vesha. And that is why when the prefrontal cortex comes in, that is where suddenly you can make the choice. Even if I don't like it, it is good for me, I'm going to do it. That is the key, Tapa. Tapa is discipline. When we talk about Tapa Swadhyaya Ishwara Pranidhanani Kriya Yogaha, the central component is tapa, which is disciplined. Even if it is not pleasant, I will do it because it is the right thing to do. To follow my dharma is more important than to follow the pleasure. As Yamaraja, Dharmaraja Yamaraja tells Nachiketas in the Kathopanishad, he says, there is the Shreya Marga and there is the Preya Marga. The Shreya is the noble path. The Preya is the pleasant path. He says, don't mistake the pleasant path to be the noble. The noble path is the path of dharma. And when you live as a human being, you are fulfilling your manushya dharma, which is to be a noble human being. My father used to say, 
Swami Gitananda Giri was my father and guru, for those who don't know, one of the greatest yogis of the past century. Someone who brought science and spirituality together long before people were even thinking about it. He used to say, we were initially Homo erectus in our evolutionary journey. That is the human being who stood up, erect. Homo erectus. We then became Homo sapien. Then we became Homo sapien sapien, supposed to be the very wise human being. And then at that point, what happened? We stopped evolving. Because the evolution is not, no longer physical. It is now a spiritual evolution where we have to evolve into what would be called a noble human being. That is Homo nobilis. If you ask me who is a yogi, I will say a yogi is a noble human being. Someone who is following dharma, their swadharma, as suggested by the Bhagavad Gita. Someone who is living the yama niyama. Ahim satya asteya brahmacharya aparigraha and saucha santosha tapaswadhyaya ishvara pranidana. Those 10 yama niyama are part and parcel of their life. They are someone who are disciplined. The tapa is there. They are capable of introspectional self-analysis, self-reflection. Nowadays in education, we talk about self-reflective learning. That is what the I am. And then after doing their best, are capable of giving over to the universe and saying, thy will be done. To surrender to the divine will. Not without doing your best. You first have to do your best. Do your best, then leave the rest is the message that we have to understand. That is why Abhyasa has to precede Vairagya. Abhyasa without Vairagya is the accelerator and your car will go and crash. Vairagya without Abhyasa is the brake and you go no place. You have to have that interplay. Abhyasa Vairagya Bhyam Tan Nirodaha through the interplay between the accelerator and the brake, the abhyasa vairagya, the effort and the relaxation, the shpanda nishpanda, activation, deactivation. That is the way that we can go forward. That is where the balance comes. So in these times of COVID-19, what is very important is we need to overcome the sense of duality. We need to start seeing the unity and the diversity, which is the most motto of our beloved country. We are always looking at diversity and unity. People are always trying to divide and rule. You are different than me. You look different than me. You speak different than me. You eat different than me. You dress different than me. You practice medicine different than me. You practice yoga different than me. You do a different yoga. You do a different pranayama. And we keep on dividing, dividing, dividing. The more we divide, the more stressed we will be. The more we move from division to unification. That is why yoga is union, communion, reunion. It is bringing all the parts together so that the wholesome Purnam can manifest. That Purnam can manifest completely in our life. When we start to see the bigger picture, that is this part. You can see the bigger picture, the bird's eye view. As long as you are caught in the lower centers, Moladhara, Swadishthana, Manipura, Anahata, and Vishuddha. These are all related to the spinal centers, the sensory apparatus, the sensory experiences, and you are caught in the jala, the web of the indriya. You are in the indriya jala. When you start to have this ajna open up, when the ajna chakra opens up, that is the point where suddenly you start to see the bigger picture because you are connecting to the manas, you are connecting to the buddhi, and you are connecting to the higher perspective, the bird's eye view. And that bird's eye view is a view that doesn't have the stress. When you have the bigger perspective, when you can see all the components, you see the bigger picture. And you are not stressed because you know this is just the temporary part. All, all's well that ends well. And you know that the ending will be good. But when you're looking at only the smaller picture, you're looking at the small Thing all the time like this, 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 this. What is happening? You will never see the bigger picture. When you only focus on the smaller picture, you will be completely stressed. When you start to focus on the bigger picture, the stress comes down and the relaxation comes up. This is why it is so vital in times of COVID-19 that we focus on the unitiveness, the oneness amongst all of us. We need to realize we have to be one. We have to communicate in 
newer technologies. We have to transform and use this as a golden opportunity to transform the way we communicate with one another. As I often say, today was my 96th nonstop online session on Facebook. For 96 days, I have been giving morning sessions for free. Why? Because I want to share. I believe sharing is caring. For 48 days, one full mandala, I did the global synchronized prayer morning and night, 96 sessions. 96 sessions and today is 96th day of this. I'm taking it up to 108 for sure. What are we doing? We are reminding ourselves that we need to be connected. Humanity has to be connected at this time. And we may not be able to be physically connected, but we can be connected through so many other ways. Because this is the time we need to support each other. We need to be there for each other and support each other, which is why it is so important to have an ear that listens. I remind people always, hearing is going to happen automatically because hearing is a passive process, but listening is an active process. Everybody hears, but few choose to listen. And that is why you can say the thing again and again and again. And some people, they get it because they have been listening. And even now, as I'm talking, some of you are hearing, some of you are listening. I hope those who are listening are more than those who are hearing. What we need to do is we need to connect. We need to connect with each other and we need to be there to listen to others. Because if each one of us has even one person who will listen to us, our life will be better. And if we can be a person who will listen to others, we will enhance the life of so many people. If just Shushan Singh had had one person who would listen to him, he would not have committed suicide. And I always tell a story of a person and there was a young boy who talked to that person at midnight saying, I'm going to commit suicide. And the person on the phone kept talking to that person and telling that young boy, this is a reason you should not do it. This is a reason you should live. That is the reason you should live and giving all these logical reasons why that person shouldn't commit suicide. After two hours, that young person told the other person, fine, you have given me, re, you have reignited the hope in me. I am not going to commit suicide, I will live. And the, both were very happy. After some days they met and the person who was the listener told the young person, you know, I gave you so many reasons that you needed to live. What is it, the reason that convinced you to live? And the young person said, none of them. None of those reasons, none of those intelligent, logical reasons convinced me to live. What convinced me to live was the fact that there is another human being who would listen to me and who could care enough to listen to me at my time of distress. Can we be that one person who will listen to others in their times of distress. Because distress is the negative aspect of stress. But stress can also bring out the best in us and that is called you stress, the positive aspect of stress. And this is why the negative stress, when we negatively respond to stress, we are going down a pathological, pathogenic pathway towards H negative, which is disease, mortality, morbidity. But if we respond positively in a eustress manner, it is called salutogenesis, the focus on health. And the more we focus on health rather than disease, the more we grow towards promoting positive health. That positive health balance will manifest when we take a salutogenic perspective that whatever happens to us, if it doesn't kill us, is going to make us stronger. And if it has killed us, well, there's always another lifetime to deal with it. So why worry about it? Anything, any stressor in our life is there to make us better. Any stressor is there to enhance our own health-promoting behavior. That is salutogenic pathway. And salutogenesis is the focus on health. Even in Indian languages, we have two terms, arogya and swast. Arogya is a negative definition of health in my mind because it is a pathological definition. Disease is roga. Absence of disease is health. So we are using disease and the absence of disease as health. That is arogya. 
But swasth is not like that. Swasth is salutogenic definition, where you are the best you that you can be. When you are you, you are healthy. When you are trying to be somebody else, you are not healthy. So that is why for me, swasth is a positive salutogenic definition of health. And with that, I'm going to conclude my talk part. Because as I told Babit Bansal, I said, I would like to take more questions. I would like to try to provide a few answers to some of the questions that can be there. That to me is very, very important rather than just me talking. So yes, over to you, Babit. And you can see how you want to take this forward, whether you want to unmute people and let them ask their question, which is also fine. I would like to see the video on when people ask questions so that I know yeah. who is yeah. asking. Yes, or it sure, could be in sure. the chat also. Yes, please. Anyone in the meeting can ask the question to the sir by unmuting themselves or chat box is also fine if possible. What would you suggest? There's a question. What would you suggest for people who are always anxious? I think anxiety has become part and parcel of being human. And how this started was, in our evolution, there was a time. There was a time in our, in our evolution when we would be walking in the forest. And when we were walking um, in the forest, what would happen is that there would be a bush. And we would think, is there a tiger behind that bush? So when you think there's a tiger behind that bush, there could be two answers. One is there, tiger is behind the bush or the tiger is not behind the bush. Two answers to the question, is there a tiger behind the bush? Now, if there's a tiger behind the bush and you know there's a, you think there's a tiger behind the bush, you have saved your life. So thinking there's a tiger behind the bush helps you if there's a tiger. And if there's no tiger behind the bush, you have anxiety but your life is still saved. So you think, oh, there's a tiger behind the bush, tiger behind the bush, but there's no tiger. You are now suffering anxiety neurosis, but there's no tiger, so you can continue to live. But if you are not anxious and you say, maybe there's no tiger behind the bush and there's a tiger behind the bush, you have just got eaten up for breakfast by the tiger. So what happened is in our evolutionary journey, what happened is that we realized that Having anxiety neurosis is okay because we are still alive. So we have to come away from that and we have to realize that anxiety actually kills us and that is where yoga, the yogic perspective comes in. Okay, now we have a lot of questions coming up. How yoga texts are useful in clinical, especially counseling? I think the concepts of yama niyama, the concepts of satipaksha bhavanam, the concepts of adopting Maitri Karuna Murito Pekshanam, those Chatur Bhavana, they are very useful. Concepts of Adija Vyadi, Anadija Vyadi, explaining this to people is very, very useful. Uh, someone has asked, Mahima has asked about props. Uh, in my opinion, you don't need props for anything. Uh, props are, are okay when you cannot do the posture you want to get there. But then people think if I don't have the prop, I cannot do the asana. It is like if you have a fracture, you use a crutch. Now that crutch is helping you walk while your fracture is healing. Once your fracture heals, please throw the crutch away. So props can be a crutch for a temporary use, never permanent. Abhyasa is the accelerator, Vairagya is the brake. And the interplay between the accelerator and the brake enables your car to go on its journey Similarly, the self-effort, the effort of abhyasa, the letting go of vairagya in your yoga sadhana helps your yoga sadhana take you to your destination, Harsha Jain. Parvati is asking, how Patanjali Yoga Sutra helpful for common man? Patanjali is the preeminent psychotherapist 
the concept of Pratipaksha Bhavanam, the concept of Maitri Karuna Mudito Pekshanam, the concept of the Kleshas is the most important aspect for anybody who is living. I gave an entire course, uh, Ashtangam, of eight sessions on the Yoga Sutras of Patanjali. You can have a look at that. Kalpana has asked, uh, how can the COVID patients who are positive, can they take proper medication at home? Uh, no. See, basically, if the person is not requiring ventilator support, they can buy isolation at home and taking care of the immunity, taking good supplements to sustain the immunity, help the self-healing, good regular relaxation in yoga will help the person a lot. But if they are requiring ventilator support, they need to be in the hospital. Most of the time, people can recover quite well if it is not a serious infection. So just because they are positive doesn't mean they have to be in a hospital. Hospitals are already overcrowded. How can we explain the importance of Yama Niyama? Everybody is concerned about Asana Pranayama. Yes, Janvi. The problem is Asana Pranayama, especially Asana can be seen outside. Yama Niyama cannot. But without Yama Niyama, there is no yoga. So if the Yama Niyama are not followed, it is physical exercise, as simple as that. And without the Yama Niyama, the person becomes, can become a rakshas through asana practice. So Yama Niyama is most important to retain the humanity of yoga. Uh, how can we convince a tough patient to live when they are not in the state? See, ultimately, the person has to take responsibility for their own health. You cannot think for anybody. You cannot eat for anybody. You cannot drink for anybody. You cannot sleep for anybody. You cannot do yoga for anybody. You can only give them the options. Either you adopt a healthy life and be healthy or unhealthy life and be unhealthy. Choice is them. Uh, how does Surya Vedana eliminate pathogens from the body? I don't know who's told you that it el eliminates pathogens. Surya Vedana basically is a practice that will stimulate your metabolic activity. And by the metabolic activity being stimulated, your responses to the pathogens will be better. You will enhance your cellular responses because of a more efficient functioning of metabolism. Surya Vedana enhances metabolic activity and that will help you deal with the pathogens better. Adija and Adija. See, Adija Vyadi, basically all diseases are Adija because psychosomatic component is so strong. Anadija, I don't think there are any Anadija diseases anymore because everything is, the mind is worsening. Either the mind is creating the problem, worsening the problem, or not letting you solve the problem. So we have to get the mind out of the way, the attachment out of the way. Basically, it is the attachment that is causing the problem. What is Sudarshan Kriya? I have no idea because I am not trained in art of living. So you have to find someone who knows it. Uh, do you think Hinduism is deviating into politics, economy? See, basically, Hinduism is only, Hindu is a word given to us, Sanatana Dharma. Sanatana Dharma is living in tune with the principle of the universe. Now, in the principle of the universe, it is not only spirituality, business, politics will also be there. So I think having good people in politics, having good people in business is good, but we should not mix them and business should not become Hinduism should not become a business and similarly yoga should not become a business. That's what I would say. How can you get over deviant thoughts? The only way is Pratipaksha Bhavanam, no other way. Uh, how can we implement other systems of yoga in clinical practice? Every system of yoga can be applied. In clinical practice, you can help the person change the mind, that is the jnana yoga, change the attitude towards how they're living, that is karma yoga. So all of it can be brought in. We just have to uh, help ourselves. Again, somebody has asked, uh, Bastrika, Sudarshan Kriya, are they the same or not? I don't know about Sudarshan Kriya. I will not comment. We see anger in the small kids. Pooja is asking. Uh, anger in the small kids is going to be there because they are not able to go out and play. If you let the small kid be a small kid, they will not have anger because they play. They play with each other. They're having a nice life. But what are we saying? Sit quietly, study, do this, don't do that. And the kid is like, I want to be a small child. Remember, Krishna was Krishna. 
he had all the emotions and because yashoda could manage him we take yashoda as an example of a divine mother uh long question from bhumika everyone is used stressed or distressed everyone knows by googling they don't know how to balance how this abhinivesha viveka vaivagya brought into samatvam in less amount of time see basically abhinivesha will exist as long as you are thinking only about yourself when you start thinking of the bigger picture you realize the world has many people there are multitudes of angles and perspectives to be taken your abhinivesha will go down pranayama sadhana is the key it doesn't matter what pranayama you do pranayama the sadhana is the key to this bhumika can we manage parkinson's disease through yoga definitely yoga as an adjuvant therapy will be very useful i don't know whether it will be curative on its own but it's definitely useful especially brahmari pranayama any of the nada pranayamas the anulom vilom would also be very useful how can you promote awareness uh, how can you promote awareness you have to as a teacher you have to be aware when your students see your awareness they should develop it there's no other way and again every yoga practice should be done mindfully if you are listening to some music and doing your yoga it is mindless yoga if you are thinking of what is for breakfast and doing your yoga it is mindless yoga the whole practice of yoga has to be dhyan purvak which means the mind has to be totally in your practice you have to be mindful of every breath every action how can we overcome the problem of overthinking very true overthinking uh, kriti mishra what you have to do is use the stop technique pratipaksha bhavanam whenever the negativity comes you say stop i am not going to think about it now get lost and that is why we have a practice where we shake we catch hold of that and we say we say go and we kick it out because that thought will keep coming back it's like a dirty dog coming into your house if you let it come into your house then it's going to mess up your house when it's at the gate you say thu 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 and you chase it away right the same thing with negative thoughts whenever these thoughts come whenever they come in my life i just say stop and i make a this is pratipaksha bhavanam this is where you express that i don't want it get out very very strongly what is the difference between bastrika and kapalbhati bastrika is definitely a pranayama kapalbhati is primarily a shakkarma but when kapalbhati is done with awareness of prana and aparna it can become a pranayama bastrika is primarily working on the chest region so it is more sympathetic arousal kapalbhati is using more the abdominal area so it's going to be more parasympathetic in the long term uh, bastrika inhalation exhalation both are active kapalbhati theoretically only exhalation is active mudras have a role in pranayama definitely yes Uh, chin mudra chin maya mudra adi mudra brahma mudra we use for the different parts a very important mudra in modern times abhaya mudra fear not uh, is very important bhairava mudra left hand down right hand on top shivalinga mudra these are very useful especially with people when you're dealing with uh, immune issues and uh, rheumatological issues uh, uh, how to develop sakshi bhava yes sakshi bhava the only way to develop is by focusing on the agnya and i have been leading something called bindu sessions i had 14 sessions you can go on my facebook and youtube and find it 14 sessions on focusing on bindus which develops a sakshi bhava the agnya chakra is sakshi bhava so anything that helps agnya chakra work is sakshi bhava how to help a depressed person when they are not going on this is exactly the morning session i've given this morning on facebook go and look at it what we have to do is be there for the person and i have talked about making the sound ha 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 because the ha sound is a sound of the solar plexus enhances serotonin um high incidence of diabetes in india high incidence of diabetes in india is because we have adopted the modern lifestyle of junk food inactivity we have reduced our activity and increased our junk food and our unnecessary stressful thinking based on the so called modern living uh, traditional indian life we if we go back to it definitely we can manage it exercise more eat less junk food aachar vichar aahar vihar vyavahar definitely is very very useful 
uh, how do mudras and bandhas support the effect when they are combined without the bandha the higher aspects the inner aspects of pranayama cannot be done and the mudras are a very effective tool for the mind to focus into different parts of the body thus enhancing the psychophysiological and spiritual benefits can you explain physiological effects of bandhas and mudras absolutely the bandhas are very very important because otherwise what happens is that pressure changes when you are holding the pranayama especially the kumbhaka phase the negativity of the pressure will be transferred up into the blood vessels going to the head or into the abdominal pelvic region so they are very very important for safety mechanism at the same time they are also very good to change the way the energy is flowing which means to change circulation the bandhas udyana jalanda mula bandha change the circulation in the throat region in the abdominal region and pelvic region mula bandha is excellent to enhance pelvic circulation and reduce pelvic congestion which is a major problem caused behind most of the uh, reproductive issues bija mantra bija mantra chanting i have been talking about this a lot because when we use a bija it is like a drop of water so that drop is going drop 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 to the same place again and again and again when that drop of water falls on that same place again and again it starts to leave a hole in that rock even a rock what will happen it gets broken down by the water why because the water has perseverance repetition rhythm regularity as amma ji my beloved mother would say when you repeat it so a bija mantra when it is repeated whether it is om 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 whichever be, be the mantra any mantra for that matter when it is repeated as a japa it will keep on working on that same place and automatically the effect will start to come role of yoga and autoimmune autoimmune is primarily because there is a dichotomy at some level and it is tough to understand especially in small kids who have autoimmune diseases which is where the sabija karma theory comes in what is very important is to try and help the mind and body to come back together and similarly to try to help that person feel at ease with themselves the more you compare yourself with others the more you worsen the autoimmune the more you are satisfied with your own self atma vashye vidhe atma prasadam adigachati atma vashye when you are self contented with yourself that prasada that higher tranquility comes and then the immune system will not be over reactive can ancient wisdom like yoga uh, veda ayurveda be considered scientific textbook 100% yes see modern science in the last couple of 100 years has adopted a certain methodology but now what we are trying to do is use the same methodology for things that have been around for thousands of years the very fact they have been around for thousands of years and they are a living tradition means there is already a validity but the problem is we are constantly trying to find double blind randomized control trials and that is where we are trying to play somebody else's game if i am a good cricketer and i try to play basketball with a basketball star i am going to lose i should play cricket if i am a cricketer if i am a footballer i should play football and i think we in the field of yoga and the indian cultural systems we need to play by our rules and not try to play by somebody else's rules do the hands have any role in bastrika pranayama in the tradition that i follow our geeta nanda tradition we do not use the hands for the bastrika but i know that there are many people who do the movement because what they feel it helps the pumping action so if it is helping the pumping action okay but normally you do not need it it could be considered as a teaching methodology but once you have learned the practice i personally don't think you need the hands to be moving at that time role of yoga and mental health well yoga is all about mental health and you can have a look on ayush blog one full article i have talked about how yoga is helping there how can you suggest some books i will not suggest any book for yoga yoga is a living tradition please find a living teacher and through that teacher start to understand what yoga is the books are only to help us they are only the guidelines the books are not the authoritative uh, uh, 
uh, you know, final statement. Your experience is very, very important here. So there are a lot of books. If you ask me, two most important texts that one needs to understand. One, definitely the Yoga Sutras of Maharishi Patanjali. The second, if possible, Bhagavad Gita. The third, if possible, Yoga Vashishta. Then the others come after that. But uh, my, my thing is that knowledge is not from books. Uh, you have to listen to a lot of people, find a guru, find someone who is a living example, follow them, learn from them. Uh, what is your perception of yoga in future? Well, I'm a bit scared about what is happening to modern yoga because just as modern medicine, uh, what happened is that modern medicine was once upon a time an art which had a heart. Then it became a science with a head and now it is a business which doesn't have heart or head. It is a pure business. And I'm afraid yoga also, which is an art and science, is now becoming a business. Nothing wrong in making money while teaching or you know helping people yo through yoga, but it shouldn't be a business model. And nowadays this business model of yoga, I think I'm a bit scared, but as long as we have young people who can take the spirit of yoga forward, I think the future can be managed. Uh, when we uh, do the bastrika heaviness in the head, I think you may be trying to do too many rounds, reduce the rounds and then slowly build it up. Because this may be because of changes in the way the blood is flowing into the head region when you're doing the bastrika. So that could be part of it. Does nature offer better or equally good solutions? I would say that nature does offer, but do we have time to go into nature? Because what is important is if we go into nature and we live in nature, natural living. My father used to often say, he said, if you eat that which is in season, if you eat in the cycles of the day and night and you follow the seasonal variation, you're going to be healthy. But we want to have mangoes in the apple season and apple in the banana season. And so what is happening is we are creating an issue. But I think nature... Actually, nature is what cures. The rest of it is to keep the person from hindering their own uh, curative ability. Effect of moon cycle on mind, yes, because as the Purusha Suktam tells us, Chandrama Manaso Jataha, and definitely there is an effect because the mind and the moon, they go together. In fact, the lunar cycle is very much related to our mood swings also. Very true. Uh, when we uh, explain the effect of asanas, pressure exerted and exerting pressure to other means. See, in asana, you are exerting the pressure by your own will. And it is not somebody else or something else giving you the pressure. So when you do the asana, you will never actually over-pressurize yourself. You cannot because your body will not let you do it. But if somebody is pushing you in the asana, or if somebody is pressurizing with an external device, they may go beyond what you need. So asanas can be understood as self-acupressure techniques. And so definitely it is definitely there when you are doing different practices, you are pressurizing. And many times the pressurizing is not causing the effect, but when you release the pressure, the circulation comes into that body part. And when the circulation is enhanced, the healing capacity is enhanced. I think we need to understand the effect of asana may not be during the asana, but after the asana has been done, which is why in our tradition, always when we do any yoga practices, we end with an adequate period of shavasana relaxation. It is in the shavasana relaxation, the benefit of the whole session may often come to you. We hear about Surya Namaskar, Chandra Namaskar. Chandra Namaskar is a modern invention it actually started off as an idea by a group in New Zealand about 50 years ago and has become popular. Indian culture has always looked at the Suryodaya, that is the sun rising. So it has always been Surya Namaskar focused. The Chandra Namaskar is more relatively new and uh, it is okay as another practice. But in yoga, the focus is more on the sun than the moon. How can a yoga teacher and student be benefited without making it a business? Uh, yes, very true. See, you should be teaching yoga for the sake of teaching yoga, not because of what somebody will pay you. And this is something in my life I have learned from my childhood. 
every time i have taken up an assignment to teach or therapy or anything like that and if i have been thinking what will i get from it that has become a failure but if i just do it for the sake of doing it what i have found is always i get more than i would have expected recently i conducted two series of um, classes which were on the yoga sutras and then on yantra and today i am starting the third one which is on adhikara yoga based on yama niyama now what happened is we made the recording and about you know the the people who benefited were benefited then i said okay let others be benefited so i said okay the recordings of these sessions will be available so people wrote to me they say we want the recording now when i was going to send it to them they said how much will it cost and in my mind i thought something but then i thought why should i why should i do it that way so i said i am sending it to you you can send me what you think would be a decent guru dakshana and you know what out of 20 people who sent back money 18 out of 20 sent me more than what i would have expected only two sent me less than what i would have expected i think we need to understand this because we keep on thinking oh i have to make money i have to i have spent money i have to make money but i think what we need to understand is that if you are doing it for the sake of yoga teach yoga for the sake of yoga do the yoga therapy for the sake of helping the other person automatically the universe will give back to you in some way or the other 99.99 times out of 100 that will happen i have seen it in my life i have seen it in lives of so many people i know how can we teach yoga free who are not aware and doing it for the sake very true one thing is that people may not value what you are giving if you give it free so you may need to sometimes charge there's nothing wrong in charging what i'm saying is i'm not saying you shouldn't charge but what i'm saying is do not do it for the sake of the money that is what i'm trying to say uh, we have to think about and how can you make the yoga class interesting well if you are interested in yoga it will automatically become interesting but if you are teaching something which you don't have interest in you can never make it interesting i love yoga yoga is my life so whenever i share it i share it the way i enjoy yoga and automatically others will enjoy it uh then nadi shodhan anulom vilom in right way uh see basically there are so many varieties of nadi shuddhi nadi shodhan anulom vilom and most of the time it is done in the ratio of 1 is to 2 some people then they start off with a 1 is to 1 ratio then 1 is to 2 then they try to bring it to the 1 for 2 ultimately it depends on each tradition there is no one correct way but if you are going to do it even if you want to do it in the commonly used 1 for 2 ratio what i would like to suggest at that point is that do not start off with that always start off with the simplest way which is 1 1 1 1 i think that is the best place to start then you can start to make the exhalation double the time then you start to do other things you want you want to bring in a held in held out that's a different aspect but do not start straight away with the higher aspect where should be the awareness while practicing asana each asana has a different point of awareness depending on whether the awareness is on the fingertips like in trikona your gaze is on the fingertips but you are also becoming aware of what is happening so i will say the awareness should be completely in the body and then you see which is the part to which you are drawn your mind is drawn to which part but try to expand to the whole body initially you are doing it trying to align yourself and then you say what am i feeling ask yourself the question what am i feeling what is happening within me and you will get the answer how pranayama helps against covid 19 settling the mind is the key element the nada pranayama is very useful for that how to convince about yoga to the public and children why should we worry about convincing we should do it when they see the benefit they will do it you don't have to go and convince a kid to play football or to play cricket because they see what is the joy in it if you make yoga joyful all kids will take it up if you make yoga accessible the public will take it up how does pranayama cool and heat the body yes here basically the process is by maybe altering the hypothalamus 
and again altering the metabolic activity. So when your metabolic activity becomes faster, which is what Surya Vedana and Surya uh, Nadi Pranayama would do, if the metabolic activity goes up, the temperature could raise. Chandra, the opposite, the metabolic activity could come down. This is a hypothesis. There have been some studies in that and uh, it's still hypothetical, but I would say hypothalamus is an important place. Second thing is through the metabolic activity. A sequence of yoga of pranayama. I'm not too sure what that question really means, but I think what is being asked is uh, whether asana should be done before pranayama or pranayama before asana sort of thing. Well, it will depend on the individual and the situation. Because many people say, oh, in Ashtanga Yoga, Yama Niyama, Asana Pranayama, so Asana has to always come before Pranayama. This is one way that people think. But then they don't do the Yama Niyama, so how can they even start Asana? So what I, what I would uh, try to tell is that uh, it depends on the individual and what is the purpose of the practice. In some people, Asana may need to be before Pranayama, some people Pranayama before Asana, some people only pranayama, some people only asana. It depends on the individual who you are working with. Uh, pranayama helps against COVID how? Uh, COVID, basically, as I said, it is the fear complex and it is based on abhinivesha. The moment you start any pranayama which is done mindfully, you are taking cortical control and hence it automatically reduces the fear. So any pranayama is useful, dramary, Pranava, the Nada Pranayama will help settle the emotions, calm the emotions down, and then the Nadi Shuddhi Anulom Vilom, balancing the hemispheres, giving a sense of inner calmness, which will then enable the immune function to be normal. Is it correct to play light music during yoga practice? If you mean music lightly, it is okay, but light music in the sense of film music and all, I don't think it is really suitable for yoga. Yoga is the internal music itself. Now for doing a demonstration on stage, you may play music, that's a different one. But even there, make sure that the music is a music that goes with the yoga and not the latest Salman Khan uh, song and, or the Rajinigan song, no, please. Uh, let, it, let it be something that is conducive. But the music and yoga, they go together, definitely yes, a harmonious, slow, a gentle music would actually be very nice. But it is not necessary. People think, oh, there's no music, I cannot do yoga. No, no, no. You can do yoga. You just need you to do yoga. You need nothing else. Actually, you don't even need clothes, but then stay in your room and do it. Don't do it in public. Uh, what type of yoga practice who is for a person loaded with stress? Uh, for me, again, Chandra Nadi Pranayama, Vramari Pranayama, Pranava Pranayama, Shpanda Nishpanda, uh, it is called the instant relaxation technique at Svyasa. We call it Shpanda Nishpanda, where you contract the whole body and then you let go. Uh, I think all of these relaxation practices are very, very useful. Uh, especially the relaxation practices should be brought in. Mindfulness should be brought in. Contemplation on the breath should be brought in. Uh, again, another question, asana, does it have to be standing, supine prone? It doesn't have to be a sequence that is in a book or you are taught. It has to be the sequence required for the individual. If I'm dealing with an elderly gentleman, standing poses may not be good for them because they may lose balance and fall down. I may want to do more sitting and supine postures. A young kid may not want to do sitting posture. They want to stand. They want, they want to enjoy the single leg postures. The women may need, especially if they are pregnant, standing postures may not be safe. So I would say the sequence depends on each individual. And we need to understand that the yoga, especially if it is going to be as a therapy, it needs to be individualized. Don't say that somebody in a book said, these are the 22 asanas for diabetes. These are the five asanas for hypertension. Please throw that out of your mind. There is no such protocol that has to be followed, please. What those protocols are just to give you an idea of which practices are useful. But which practices are useful for the individual you are dealing with, you have to use your viveka, your common sense, and create a schedule for each individual. I think it is our own time to end here. And so yes, yes. I would like to thank all of you for your patient hearing, for the wonderful questions, the, the avalanche of questions uh, that were coming. 
and uh, I, I think it's wonderful. It means that some of you were awake and listening to me. So all of those who were awake and listening to me, thank you for doing so. And for those who are sleeping, thank you for proving that my voice is a good lullaby that can put you to sleep. So thank you to each and every one of you. And a special thank you to uh, Bhavit Bansal for this invitation. Because I think there's nothing I love more than to share yoga with others, especially all of you who to me are the future. You are the future of yoga and yoga therapy. Please make sure that you keep yoga as the priority. Everything else should be secondary. Yoga should be priority number one. Then comes everything else. If you remember that, I think that will be a very good uh, gift I have been given today. Thank you so much, sir, for letting us know all the perspectives from start to end. And I think many of us who had questions about asana, pranayama, those we are reading from our first year to second year, but the perspective, what we should know as a doctor or as a therapist or as a yoga instructor, we are getting cleared through your session. So thank you so much, sir, for allowing us to share your knowledge with all of us. Hello, sir. Yes, yes please. Uh, hello, sir. Sorry for the interruption. Yeah, yeah. Sir, there is a one more question. Just uh, it's a common uh, doubt for everyone that's asked by Ria, Ria Shindal. Which doubt? If, if you can ask me the question again, because there are so many questions in the chat. It is tough to find whose question is in the chat. Last question, last question. Uh, just uh, Ria Shingal asked. The last, the last question How is there. Asana session for different age group. That was the last question. Okay. Okay. Fine. Uh, first of all, my suggestion is don't pe don't have too many people of different age group in the sense of if you have kids who are five and six and you have somebody who's 70 and somebody who's 40, you are going to have a very, very tough time because the smaller kids need a lot of fun lot of activity because you have to burn up their energy. You have to constantly be keeping them engaged. In the senior citizen, they may need more of relaxed and slow type of practices. So what I say is that try to avoid too much of a mixed group as much as possible. Keep the children's class separate, keep the you know adults class separate. And if they are senior citizens, keep them separate because trying to find one methodology to suit all of them will be very, very difficult. So my sincere advice is otherwise it's going to be difficult. The only time you can keep people of different ages in the same class is if they belong to the same family. Because there you are starting to work on family bonding. And so you can start to have through your creativity, what are the practices the grandfather can help the grandchild? What are the practices the child and the mother can do? What are the practices the husband and wife can do together? So you use your creativity to create a beautiful family relationship. So in that situation, you could have somebody, the grandfather, the grandchild, and the parents in the same class. But otherwise, I would very sincerely suggest those who are children, keep them in one session, keep it vigorous, keep it active, keep it energetic. That is what the kids need. But uh, I, I, think, I think you need to keep it that way because otherwise you will go mad trying to figure out which practice is suitable and then you'll be telling kids do this but adults don't do it. Adults do it, don't do it in the kids and uh, you will go mad actually. So uh, the best thing is keep different age groups separately uh, for your mental peace and so that the practice can be more focused on what those, that group of people need. That is just a practical advice I give you. Thank you so much, sir, for your time. And so we we'll land with Om Shanti, Shanti, yeah. Shanti. So those who want to learn a bit more about this, you can go on Facebook. You just type in Yoga Charya Dr. Anand Yogi Bhavanani. My Facebook page comes up. You'll find 96 sessions of the videos there. You'll find a lot of stuff. And on YouTube, if you go, yog nat 2001 Yognath2001. You'll find nearly 1,000 videos there with all the sessions. They're most welcome to enjoy them. And Academia and the Research Gate has all the research papers. So enjoy yourself. Let's all 
learn, live, grow and glow in yoga. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Thank you, everyone.